Mm. Uh, oftentimes we talk about uh, fintech is uh, the big splash uh, that is making the headlines everywhere. And of course, you saw that yesterday with the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Uh, that competition on x Cathon took about creative ideas, new ideas on how to increase securities market participation among the millennials. So uh, next week is going to be a big one for fintech Nigeria, uh, this big uh, an expanding uh, network of uh, firms and individuals who are professionals in that field. And that's what uh, Babatule uh, Ebrima is uh, talking to us this morning. Mr. Ebrima is the Chief Operating Officer of Fintech Nigeria and is in charge of putting this very big Fintech week together. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to have you. Thank um, you. This is, uh, when we talk about fintech, and just uh, roll back a little bit, it's, it's not entirely new in Nigeria, but again, in recent months and years, it suddenly becomes a sing-song for everyone about what fintech can do, not with the mobile phones and what have you, and internet of things and the uh, global information uh, superhighway. So how much have you, are you folks doing uh, at the moment? Well, at the moment, um, we have about 100 members in the Fintech Association, that cuts across various sectors of the economy involving disruptive solutions. So it's not just the financial technology. We have agri-tech, we have ed-tech, we have insure-tech, we have law-tech. Uh, oh, really? So it's, I mean... You're everywhere. We're everywhere. So, um, they, they, so what we're doing now is to be able to bring people together. We're driven by three objectives. One, to connect, bring everybody within that disruptive space together. Two, to accelerate technological development as a country so that we innovate or we die. So we have to champion that cause. And then advocacy, you cannot do this without progressive regulatory reforms, being able to work together with regulators to ensure that there are progressive reforms that fit the disruptive um, digital reforms that's going all over the, all uh, over of the place. Of course, when we talk about uh, fintech uh, in, in many jurisdictions, mm. oftentimes it starts on, on Broad Street, or what's called the market <laughs> street. <laughs> Basically, the banks, the financial mm. services industry. Yeah. But now you're talking about agriculture mm. and, and, and others, and, and it looks like this is going to be a big game. Do you see it as a game changer for the economy as a whole? Yeah, it's going to be a game changer. Um, we have to start looking at new ways of doing things. I mean, take agriculture, for example. 80% of the farmers are low-income farmers, but they provide the food that we eat, but then we don't have enough. So maybe we start to flip it, looking at the Pareto principle, 20% should feed the rest of us. Technology will do that. So, I mean, so you have that space. I mean, look at law. People, why do you have to go to a lawyer, the law firm? When you can go on the internet, get on their website, pay for a template, they download a will for you, you fill, you send back, and it's all done. So that's technology, game changer. So, I mean, we have to look at technology in all ramifications, not just in the financial sector, but at the end of the day, anyway, everything comes back to Naira and Kobo, which comes back to fintech. Yeah, exactly. That's where I see it. Yeah, but when, you're, when the members who mm -hmm. are professional bodies and organizations, when you folks sit together and, and, and cross my ideas and all of that, what are their key concerns for fintech in Nigeria? What are they worried about doing well, business in Nigeria, being innovative under this environment? Well, what they're worried about is um, acceptance. When I say acceptance, the, the general uh, government and uh, economic environment. Let, let's, let, for example, it's seven million dollars came into the fintech space last year. It is 6.7 out of that 87 million was from outside Nigeria. Only 300 thousand dollars came in without which is domestic capital. Which is domestic capital. Mm. So what does that mean? It means that there's going to be those monies have to be protected at a point in time, which has effect on our foreign exchange. So we, the, the biggest challenge is having local funds to support startups. You know, the startup stage is almost like a sunk cost. It's so that you can lose money, but and you can what's it called? So you have we have to have that patient capital for the, the, the fintech environment. That's one of the biggest challenges, having patient capital, the issue of licensing and regulation, uh, other issues that come, but you see, a, a financial systems are stable as the regulations that govern it. So we have to have regulation. What should be regulated is another issue entirely. In terms of investment capital, uh, it's, it's good news and it makes big headlines mm -hmm. when Google comes in here or Mark, Mark Zuckerberg and the mm -hmm. rest uh, and, and Yahoo and what have you. Yes, but, but again, 
this is their money and their ideas they're bringing mm -hmm. in. So, uh, within the fintech space in Nigeria, are we seeing professionals, young people, perhaps not so young, uh, developing new softwares, new apps, and what have you? Are you encouraged by things that you've seen within our domestic space in terms of our own creativity, which could attract angel investors, venture capitals, P&Es, or, or private equity investors, and the likes? Yes, I mean you. I mean you see a lot of money coming into the likes of the Flutter Wave, Paystack, and co. They're all foreign money, and they're developing solutions for the local environment. Uh, so there's a lot of the potentials are huge, but we need to encourage uh, the, the younger people to start to think creativity as part of activities. We're having a student hackathon. We have about 2,000 students coming in from different parts of oh, the country oh. into University of Ibadan on the last day of the event, and there's a hackathon that's already going on. Three of them, three winners will come hackathon out of that. Hackathon seems to be the, the, the new wave. Yeah. Uh, the stock exchange just did one yesterday. Yes. It looks like that. I, I need to get in there. I, I'm not so young, but maybe <laughs> I could have some creative ideas to come from these younger ones. 2,000. Yes. Students. and uh, yes. So, I mean, they're going to be three winners. In addition to that, Microsoft and Action Global are going to also have another event in Lagos as the last day of the two, mm. two main days, and the winner is going to go with $100,000. So, there's a lot of... Uh, there's a lot going on. Last year, after the event, Efina put in $2 million, and there were six winners for that, too. So, there's a lot of support for local, uh, but it's coming from What would outside. you like the government to do? Specifically, put pen to paper. And you got a pen here. And you're going to write that to the Minister of Communications, uh, whatever, and say, this is what we want to get done. Yes. The first because thing... if you're putting 2,000 students together, th these are young folks who will be entrepreneurs, social entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. fintech entrepreneurs, and we need to create jobs. And you folks are helping the government. So what would you want government to do? One, to create a special fund for the fintech sector, which we can work with them to manage, to um, but these young people, there are a lot of startups, but a lot of them die because they do not have the capital to move to the next stage. And uh, it's not easy to borrow money. So, I mean, and it's really expensive for them to borrow at that stage. So if we have those seed funds that can be used, created to support them, that will be a way to start. Money is, money is the first thing. So you, you want something like agri-sector intervention, like the uh, uh, Anchor Borrowers Program of the Central Bank, something like that. Yes, I mean, the, the Central Bank has something they've introduced recently, $22 billion, which is for entertainment, yes, which is also industry. creative, yes. which will, so we're trying to see how they can get into... into your, into into your the, space yes, as well. Yes, filter uh, into our space, yes. yes. But at the same time, we need to have the government to support to create that fund, which will be grants rather than uh, loans at that initial startup so stage. you're looking for grants? Yes. Okay, that is different from, from an intervention fund. Yes, different okay. from an intervention oh, oh, fund. Oh, great. But when we go back to, to Market Street, and it begins to sound like music, the handshake between the Securities and Exchange Commission, which had been going on, uh, 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 Dr. Aino, who is the founder of FinTech Nigeria, I'm sure they've had a few interactions with the SEC. Yeah. You are the CEO of this body of professionals, and now you want to do something very big with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Yes. yes. Um, the we've worked with the exchange, and there's now a fintech roadmap for the capital market, which will be launched next week, Tuesday, at the fintech week. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a very big event, and it's going to change dynamics. For example, there are a lot of people doing crowdfunding. Really, there's no regulation for it. But with the new fintech roadmap, there's a regulation for it. So it's easy for a lot of people to come into the market and raise funds for even uh, uh, MSMEs to raise funds under those arrangements, which will now be, I mean, investors are now sure that this has gone through a proper due diligence process. If I'm putting my money, I'm sure of getting my money back. So, I mean, that's one of the issues in the in the document. But again, drilling down, because if you're doing a FinTech week, mm. uh, you've got all the, all the big boys uh, coming uh, through. I'm sure the banks will, will, will take some of the front seat. Uh, perhaps some others that are also fintech companies, but who are just uh, uh, doing big business, making big money there without letting the rest of us know. <laughs> There's a lot of money in, in fintech, isn't it? Well, there is, there is a lot of money, but this is not fast money. If you look at most fintechs, there's actually a curve. You, know, the, you, you the, the start, mm. you grow gradually. At times, it's volume-driven. Even the likes of Amazon, they start making money until recently, but see the, the, the transactions start to speak, and then the profits start to come. Mm. So, I mean, there are a lot of big boys doing a lot of big things, but not fast money. Mm. Mm. 
There, there are concerns about um, uh, rising incidents of, of cyber crimes, cyber uh, security, and, and what have you. Locally, the, some agencies like the EFCC and all of that are trying to wrap their heads around some of these incidences. Is this part of what you folks are, at FinTech are worried about, you're concerned about? Yes. I mean, everybody has to be concerned about, about that, making sure that there's proper things that don't. There are a lot of uh, what I would call a lot of rogue FinTechs. No licenses, they're doing business. So, I mean, we, there's a need to put things in place. Once you can deal with some of those issues, uh, but you see, I've, I mean, the guys who sit in their home, the Yahoo Yahoo people who f defraud mm. people. So, there are lots to be done. As part of advocacy, we're talking with like the NFIU to be, to be strategic partners so that we can look at a global approach to things that affect FinTech generally. Mm. I'm sure that will, that will interest uh, every one of us uh, because with fintech, uh, folks are also worried about identity theft and what have you because now you have to do NIM, your data is with the road safety, is with the banks, with the central bank, is with, is with the FIRA. So my data, your data is, is everywhere. Uh, so folks are beginning to get worried about fintech is good, but again, uh, could be uh, could be a weapon. But you know the good thing about Nigeria is that because we have the the cheap card, when you're doing transactions, you, there's almost two levels with it. Mm. This, the, the fraud rate is lower. We have one of the lowest fraud rates when it comes to card uh, transactions. Most of the uh, frauds on cards come when people do things either outside of the country or you're swiping your card. Mm. So, but locally, I mean, in terms of security, I think the central bank has done quite a very good job when it comes to, when it comes to that. So when you look at most of the frauds where you say Nigerians are involved, they're actually mostly things that happen outside of the country because people get vulnerable, because they're being tricked into doing things. But in terms of our own local transactions, I think the security is quite, quite good. Mm. Okay, thank you. Looks like a big one next week. Uh, so I wish you guys all the best. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and get you professionals working with the government and everyone working together. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Well, Dr. Mabal today, uh, Obrima, who is the Chief Operating Officer at Fintech Nigeria, a body of professionals uh, getting all the Fintech issues together for the benefit of the economy and the markets.